Hello there YouTube, uh, my name is Derek and uh, I just wanted to do a review of the Roland uh, FA08 keyboard workstation. Um, I've had it for about a year now, over a year, and uh, so I just wanted to kind of give my thoughts uh, on the board. Um, now I do want to say full disclosure, this video will be a lot more talking than it will be playing and so I wanted to get that out the way so you know what you're in for so we can avoid the comments in the comment section saying more playing less talking um, tons of videos all over YouTube of people playing the keyboard uh, the FAO 6 the FAO 7 the FAO 8 just playing it you can hear it uh, but I would actually give my thoughts on it as somebody who's who's used it who's gigged with it um, and used it in a variety of scenarios I want to give my thoughts on it and uh, what I think about it so that's what this uh, that's what this video is about because I've noticed uh, kind of a dearth of uh, user reviews from actual uh, users out there uh, on YouTube that have used the instrument um, kind of going in depth lots of demos people playing songs and stuff like that and covers and stuff but as far as just kind of talking about what they like don't like their opinions to kind of inform someone who's in the middle of making a buying decision um, not a lot of videos like that out there right now that I could find there are some some good ones uh, but I just wanted to do a review and just talk about my thoughts, my experiences and stuff with it. And uh, you can take it for what it's worth. So with that said, let's go on and talk about the build quality of the board. All right, perfect. So let's talk about the build quality. So build quality, I would say overall the build quality is good. Um, it's made out of a lot of plastics, got a lot of plastic and stuff places. Um, but I think it's packed with a lot of features. So uh, Roland had to make some cutbacks somewhere and that's where they did it. Um, this board is going for about $1799.99 at most retailers. So $1800 is what you would pay for this. Um, so they made some cutbacks and stuff some places. Uh, and then the build, the build where they, you know, kind of make out of plastic. That's kind of where they, um, that's kind of where they made some cutbacks. But it is good quality. Um, the buttons and stuff feel good and solid and the knobs and stuff feel good again I've had it for over a year and uh, I've taken it gigging and stuff like that and I don't have any anything there's nothing that's broken all the keys work all you know the pitch pin wheel everything everything works the way it worked uh, when I first got it so build quality it has held up um, to the road but of course I take care of my gear I'm not throwing it into the back of a truck uh, without a case and stuff on it and it's you know bouncing all around and stuff like that if that's kind of what you're doing or you know that kind of thing uh, then you you might when you might be concerned about the build quality but you know you're putting it in a hard case or whatever taking care of it even a soft case good one and you're just um, you know taking care of it and you know you, you'll be fine so uh, build quality so far for me for a year um, has been has been good key bed uh, I do like the key bed I like the fact that the keys uh, kind of have a grippy feel um, to them like an ivory they call it like the ivory touch you know feel it's just where the keys have a little bit of texture to them and that little bit of texture does make a difference um, keeping your hands from slipping when you're playing so that is uh, that's cool I would say that the key bed itself is on the heavier side now it is you know lighter on the top and uh, heavier on the bottom just like an acoustic piano uh, but I would say the keyboard touch is on the heavier side you know of keyboards based on the various uh, weighted keyboards that I have played uh, heavier is not necessarily bad it depends on your your preference it does for me it makes it so I can play a little more expressive especially when I'm playing quietly and stuff like that because you know you got to really hit it hard in order for it to you know sound like you're hitting it hard so anyway that's kind of nice uh, but I do like the board uh, sometimes it's a, the key bed sometimes it seems a little spongy when I'm trying to play fast um, so anyway but that would be you know your preference but it is a good quality uh, weighted weighted key keyboard so again good good build quality uh, so I just wanted to quickly go over some of the ports I, I don't want to do a whole lot of specification stuff because you can find spec stuff anywhere but you know it's good to have your headphone it's going to have your headphone jack It's going to have your you know your two main outs left and right uh, but it also has a, a sub out in the sub out you can assign anything to go to the sub out so it can be a metronome it can be a click track it can be anything going to that sub out so that offers some versatility again when you're getting in certain situations the board is going to have some versatility to do some, be able to do some things that you want it to do but it's just one 
sub out. It's not a left and right. It's just one quarter inch jack. So uh, that's where that's at. Um, then it's going to have like a line in jack. So it has a line in jack so you can connect like your tablet, your phone um, to it, you know, capture music or samples or anything you want off of there. Put it in here. You can apply it to the actual pads or the sampler inside of your board and play them back so that offers some versatility. And it's going to have your guitar uh, slash mic input. It's one input, but you can use it for guitar or microphone. So for a microphone, like if you want to do a vocoder, you can do that. You want some samples or something you want to record and put it on the pads. You can also do that as well. Or, you know, hey, play guitar. You got some guitar tracks, whatever you want to play, play the guitar. You know, add them to the tracks, add them to the pads, rather, play them back. So lots of versatility there. Um, I don't think that you can actually add samples to the keys themselves, uh, but you can add them to the pads. So it's more of a sample playback uh, and you can trigger the playback by using um, using the pads so these aren't and the pads by the way aren't touch sensitive so you're not gonna be doing any keyboard drumming up here uh, they're literally just to basically playback samples and they have some other functions and features where like you can mute tracks or select tracks and stuff like that just by touching the pads and there are 16 of them which corresponds to the 16 tracks in your sequencer so uh, that's what that has there. So uh, then it has a, a thumb drive uh, port so you can like update the uh, firmware inside. It has a USB uh, port as well so you can connect it to your DAW and use it as a controller. has that feature but also has an SD card slot. And uh, so that's where you like store your sequences and different things like that. But one cool thing about the SD card slot that I do like is that you can actually um, like if you if you use the sequencer and record, you can record it in your board. Whatever you have, you can record real quickly and use your sequencer as a scratch pad. Because I know a lot of people nowadays are using a DAW to do their recording, which is cool. I nothing wrong with the DAW. They're really really um, they're going to be way more versatile, um, way more versatile, easier to use and stuff like that when it comes to editing and stuff like that. Uh, certainly. But what you can do with this is, you know, you can get your ideas down quickly, turn though your ideas into audio stems, put it on your SD card, um, and then take your SD card out of the board, put it into your DAW, and now you're working with audio tracks and you can do all your editing and all that stuff there with your audio. So that's cool as well. So lots of supports and stuff on the back. It doesn't have additional, uh, outputs like a, another left and a right and stuff like that like you would in some other boards But again once again, I think for the price for 1800 bucks. It uh, gives gives you a lot. So Anyway with that said, let's go ahead and let's get into some of the sounds
right. So what you just heard there was you heard the um, some of the acoustic um, piano sounds. I played three grands and one upright. I really will say, in my opinion, that the um, that the acoustic piano sounds are actually beautiful. They're they're really really great. Um, now I did play what are what's called what Roland calls the their supernatural sounds, and with the supernatural sounds. You have some some ways that you can edit them. First of all, they sound they sound close to authentic as far as um, sound like the real their real acoustic counterparts. Uh, however, um, you can actually edit the sounds, the supernatural sounds, in ways that you can't do the other sounds. So, for instance, with the pianos, you can adjust the string resonance because they have um, string resonance um, programmed. Uh, so you can adjust uh, the parameters of the string resonance. You can adjust the hammer noise. Uh, so there's just some different things that you can adjust when it comes to the supernatural sounds that you cannot adjust when it comes to the rest of the sounds. And so that's one of the things that you know you might want to be careful of when looking at a stat sheet because I can't remember how many sounds it is, but it's a ton of sounds. You can look up the specs, but it's a ton, a ton of sounds that come with it. When it comes to all those pianos. A lot of those pianos are from, you know, the XV3080, 5080, JV1080. I used to have a Roland XV3080. Um, so I, a lot of those older sounds are there. They don't have string resonance. You can't adjust hammer noise and stuff like that. They're just the old PCM sounds. So I personally, I don't have a use for the older PCM sounds anymore. Now that there's better technology and we can sound closer to a real grand piano, I don't really have a use for the other ones. Maybe if you're playing something vintage or something like that, performing out or something sounds kind of nice or cool or whatever, uh, great. Uh, I personally don't have a use, really have a use for those. Um, it's nice that they're there, they give you some options, but not really necessarily needed in my case. But again, the sounds are completely changeable, so you can adjust sounds on the fly, or you can adjust, uh, adjust the, like, the compressor, uh, you can adjust uh, reverb you just turn a knob and change the reverb you can adjust of course you know like cut off resonance attack and release uh, you can adjust the pan you can even adjust the the level itself so it's really nice uh, I think the sounds are really good you can EQ it you know you got a you know a, uh, like a low frequency three mids and a high right on the fly writing your knobs right here uh, adjusting those parameters so if it doesn't sound like you want it to sound right out the box you can change it because it is a work station so uh, a lot of times people listen to a preset and go oh those are horrible you know i like this keyboard better that keyboard better because it cuts through a mix better or the pianos you know they might say oh the pianos sound more mellow or i like it's a warmer feel well you can make these pianos pretty warm if they're not warm enough for you or you can give them a lot of bite if it doesn't bite enough for you so it just comes down to actually going into the parameters, editing it, changing it, saving it, and then that piano becoming the piano that you that you would want. So, anyway, uh, that's it for the acoustic pianos. Now let's get into some uh, let's get into some EPs. Let's get into some electric pianos here. Thank you. 
So uh, let's talk about the let's talk about the EPs. I really like the EPs. Uh, the roads sound really good to me. Um, actually, they sound very very good. And once again, very tweakable. So if it's like oh, it could be a little more this or a little less that to you, uh, you could definitely um, tweak it. You can even with the supernatural uh, sounds, you can control the noise level and whatnot. So I really like the way the EP sound. Not a whole lot to say about those. They just sound beautiful. You can always add all your different effects and chorus and reverb, um, delays, you know, tremolo, whatever you want to add, flanger. You can, you can add all of that to the EPs. They will really sound great. Make them your own. Save them. Use them. They're great. Um, now, as far as the organ is concerned, I'm really not a big fan of, of keyboard organs. Uh, I think that they are practical in the sense that you may need to use them if you need an organ sound, um, especially as a gigging musician, you may need that. Um, so I think the organ sound in here is great. There, there's a lot of flexibility as far as the organ sounds are concerned. When you talk about the supernatural organs, that is. Uh, you can adjust like the leakage level, um, the different percussion, uh, percussion settings and stuff like that. Uh, you know, the click sound and you know, the click, you know, the noise that it makes when you let off the key. I mean, just so many different things. and. And then the overdrive and so many different things you can really make it sound very very good as far as the organ um, is concerned um, one of my main gripes is that uh, yes you can adjust the draw bar settings but you have to adjust them using the jog wheel and these buttons here um, so as far as real-time adjusting of the draw bars not really that good um, and you can't map them to the knobs. Now, granted, there are only six knobs, and there would be nine draw bars, technically speaking. But it, it would be nice to be able to control it somehow. Or if I could at least map it, uh, map the draw bar settings to be controlled by my controller keyboard. So I have another controller here. It's just off the camera. You can see it there a little bit. It's just my Nectar LX uh, LX88, and it's got the sliders on it. Uh, nine sliders, I believe it has. Yeah, so it's got nine sliders and. I, it would be perfect where you could adjust the organ settings and stuff like that. Like when I uh, play mains, when I use main stage, um, I take my nectar and I can adjust the organ settings, organ settings, uh, adjust the draw bars rather, using the sliders and just map the sliders to the uh, to the program, and so I can pull the sliders in and out, and that's pulling. It's like pulling the draw bars out or you know pushing them in and stuff like that, and it's good real time control. This doesn't have that real-time control. I wish it did, or wish you could at least control it by an external um, controller, but you can't. So, um, not not a big fan of that. Uh, now the Leslie Leslie simulation is pretty good. Uh, it's pretty decent. There are some better ones out there, um, especially if you want to spend some more money and get like a 
a Nord or something like that, the, I think that the, the it's gonna they're gonna be better, especially if you get like a Hammond or something like that. They're going to be definitely better. So if you're if you're big on organ and organ is your thing, um, maybe the FA08 is not where you would actually um, look, not what you should be looking at to get if organ is one of your main things that you play. Uh, but you can adjust, you know, like the um, you can change how you turn Leslie on and off and stuff like that. So it comes by default as assigned to the buttons here on the side, but you can uh, map it or you can change the controls so that you can control it with, you know, virtually any button and stuff like that. And kind of while we're on the topic of that, I do want to say that it does not have aftertouch. And it was kind of a weird place to bring it up, but I just thought about it as far as controlling like the Leslie and stuff like that. It doesn't have aftertouch. And I don't really understand why uh, a keyboard in 2018 doesn't have aftertouch. I mean, I know it's like, oh, we want to keep the cost down so we don't put aftertouch in. However, I had an Alesis QS7 back in like 1999. So, I don't know, was that 19 years ago? And um, the board had uh, aftertouch. Um, and in the Alesis QS7, I mean, you could look it up. It wasn't like the cream of the crop back then. Um, it was more of a mid-level, kind of like what this grade is, where it's not up there with the top flagships of, you know, of other brands. Um, but the Alesis QS7 way back then had aftertouch, and so I'm not sure why uh, in 2018 we don't have aftertouch. I'm not sure what's going on with key beds and stuff like that, but it'd be nice if it had aftertouch just so you could control... Um, just so you could, you know, had more control and could dig into the board and get some different effects and sounds and stuff like that. So anyway, that would be nice. But again, uh, so just real quick, the organs, they do sound good, especially if you're gonna play in a mix, in a band, it's gonna, you know, they're they're passable. They're, it's definitely usable. And um, again, remember, most of the people in the audience are not gonna know the difference. So very, very good, uh, very, very good organs. I just wish that there was a way to actually control the sliders and stuff control the draw bars in real time in, in, a, in a better way so anyway with that said let's go on and move on to the next instrument i think we'll do um we'll do bass next let's hear what some of the basses sound like 